Hello everyone, I'm Nathias Monzel, and this is the New Gaming Studios Smite Artemis Guide. I'm gonna start out with just a few quick Artemis highlights. So, as you can see, Artemis is a ranged physical carry. Uh, I believe she was actually the first ranged physical carry brought into the game. Uh, she hits very hard. She has a variety of different builds you can go on her. Uh, today, we're going to be looking at a build that's kind of a heavy damage, a uh, little bit lower attack speed kind of build with a good bit of critical strike mixed in. Uh, the other build is a very fast attack speed slash on hit effects. Um, they both have relatively the same playstyle. It's just a matter of like burst damage versus consistent damage. Uh, Artemis is passive. It's called Steel Target. Uh, Artemis gains a critical strike chance buff on each successful hit, and it stacks up to three times. So every time you land an attack, you increase your critical strike chance. Uh, which for a range physical carry is just wonderful. And you see you pick up the first blood on Odin right there. Uh, early game is where most of the range physical carries are going to be a little bit weaker. They're kind of item dependent. You see we started with the warrior tab eye for this build. We're going to rush immediately into the Deathbringer. Go ahead and get our critical strike up, our physical power up. Um, at stage 3, Deathbringer gives you critical strike still 50% increased damage. Which is just absolutely amazing. Uh, Artemis's one is a trap-like ability called Transgressor's Fate, and she places a trap that additionally will act as a ward if you're on a map like Conquest. Uh, enemy gods coming within five feet of her traps activate them, rooting and crippling the enemy god, preventing movement abilities and dealing damage every second for three seconds. So this is something you can only throw right at your feet. It's not like um, Caitlyn from League of Legends where you can use it to safely check bushes ahead of you or something like that but you can use it as a ward if you need to watch your jungle um, your support couldn't buy any something like that it's also very nice just keeping people in place so that you can deal more damage uh, vengeful assault well, you can see right here the, uh, the crazy Zeus plus Odin combo is gonna be the cause of most of our deaths I believe but anyway her two ability is vengeful assault Artemis attacks at a furious pace, increasing her attack speed significantly. And it is indeed a significant increase to her attack speed. And this ability is both what I max first and what I believe makes this build viable. We are sacrificing a little more a little bit more attack speed than I would like on a ranged physical carry. But we do have her two ability, and since this this build is all about getting burst damage in we really don't need to stay around much longer than that. We're going to hit so hard that we're going to be able to get through the team fight in the amount of time it takes for her two to uh, go back on cooldown and for the buff to fall off of us. You see right there, we're already chunking Ares who's a tank for a good bit of his health. Uh, her three ability is suppress the insolent. Artemis fires a volley into a ground target, suppressing all of her enemies. Enemies caught within the volley are damaged and are slowed. Uh, so this is just an AoE slow. It does a pretty good amount of damage. Uh, just going into a fight, you're going to throw this out ahead of you. Uh, it takes a little bit, there's like a slight delay. And it landing at the target takes a little bit of time to get used to, but it's really not bad. It's a very, very short delay. You see right there, Kali actually gets stuck in one of our traps and dies because of it. And that's what picks us up the assist. Uh, your traps really are like... That kind of thing always feels a little bit weird on a ranged physical carry because it's not really what you want to do. You're not really trying to support things or ward things. But it is incredibly helpful to have just in case you need something. And your ultimate is Caledonian Boar. 
Artemis summons the great Caldonian boar to wreak havoc on her enemies, doing damage to the nearest enemy god and stunning them and itself. The boar continues to charge other gods for its lifetime. Artemis is also immune to crowd control for 3 seconds. So we can go ahead and just look at that last sentence. Artemis is also immune to crowd control for 3 seconds. For a ranged physical carry, that's pretty amazing. You're going to be focused down. Let's go ahead and just establish that. As a ranged physical carry, you are going to be focused down hard. That will pretty much be the other team's main objective in the team fight is to get you down quickly. So immunity to crowd control for three seconds is awesome in itself. Your boar. I have mixed feelings about the boar. It's amazing when it hits this target. It does. It's a fairly long stun. It does a decent amount of damage. It really sets you up to get a suppressed insulin off on top of them. Um, for them to just stand there while your vengeful assault ticks away. If you react really fast, you can place a trap under them, and then they'll come out of the stun, get caught in the trap, and that's a lot of time for you to just sit there and well on them. But, it does hit a random enemy. It's not really a target. And that can be really annoying, because there's their enemy carry is like right in front of you, he's right about to die, you pop the boar, and it charges someone else. And that person gets away, and that can be really frustrating. So you do have to understand that it's not always going to go where you intended to go, but it is an amazing ability to have. So as you can see, as we're fighting, um, I'm trying to be aware of where I am in relation to my team and the other team. And more often than not, uh, just bad positioning is what's going to kill you when you're playing a ranged physical. So I'm trying to stay behind Thor primarily, but Sun Wukong if I can help it. We also have a Neath who's doing uh, fairly well, so I'm also keeping track of my position based on her position since Neath is also a physical carry. Um, you see right there, the suppressed the instant actually did a pretty good amount of damage to the two people it hit. There, uh, I just popped the boar right there and it got that Ares off me. But then he's gonna come back around for it. Uh, so as you can see, we really should have just backed out of that earlier. We stayed it around too long. Uh, if you're active items, Sprint and Purification Beads are both wonderful. Uh, Blink absolutely has its merits here. Uh, Blink's a little bit of a new item for those of you who haven't got to use it yet. Uh, if you've been out of combat for 6 seconds, you can activate Blink and then teleport to a location. That's a fair distance away. I prefer having Sprint because I can use it in combat to escape and to catch up and get more kills. Uh, especially because we don't go Frostbound Hammer in this build, so if you don't have a Suppressed Insulate or your ultimate up, you don't really have a way to keep a specific single target from getting away from you unless they run over a trap that's kind of out of your control. So you really want to have, um, or I really like to have Sprint, so that instead of keeping a single target pinned down, I can just speed up to that target. And Purification Beats again, the CC immunity for you, you are very squishy, and it's something that you need to be aware of, and it's not really something that you're going to correct throughout the game, because it's just kind of, uh, just part of being a ranged physical carry, honestly. Um, you're designed to hit hard and be hit hard. So anything that can break you out of CC and let you take a few less really hard hits is a really nice thing. Uh, there's also definitely an argument to be made for Aegis Amulet. You could absolutely go Aegis Amulet and Beads, uh, Sprint and Aegis Amulet, whatever you want to do. Uh, Ares is one of the people that I found annoys me the most when I'm playing ranged physical carries. So it's good to know specifically that Purification Beads... If you pop it while Ares ultimate is attached to you before he actually pulls you in, it will prevent him from pulling you in. You will still take a little bit of damage from it, but you won't actually get drawn back into Ares uh, ultimate. And that in itself is just a huge lifesaver. Because usually when someone picks Ares, at least one other person on the team is going to pick some really hard hitting AoE ultimate and you're just going to get blown up immediately. So the items are going here. We started with the Warrior Tabai, Rush Deathbringer, and then 
Uh, after that, it kind of varies depending on how I'm feeling in the game. But basically, uh, like so, we have Word Tabai, Deathbringer. Then you're going to go into either Brawler's Beat Stick, uh, the Executioner, Rage, and the last one changes back and forth a little bit. Those are the five main. And why those? So, the Warrior Stab is going to give you your physical power, movement, um, your uh, penetration. The Executioner is going to give you power and attack speed. Uh, it's also going to give you some physical penetration. The Brawler's Beat Stick gives you crit and lifesteal. The Rage is going to give you uh, damage, attack speed, and crit. And it's also going to increase your crit chance uh, the longer you go without scoring your crit. Which, uh, for your passive, like, it, they can kind of, like, go to waste over top of each other. But it very often ensures that you're getting crits way more often than your crit chance should be. But, why is that such a big deal? Why is soaring a critical strike such a big deal with Artemis? We have the Deathbringer, and we have the Deathbringer early. And like we said, at stage 3, the Deathbringer is going to give you plus 50% critical damage. So now, not only are you very, very often scoring a critical hit, and you can see... Uh, a critical hit is kept track of by when the damage pops up when you hit someone it'll be in like a red like bloody looking bubble type thing that's a critical strike and you see how many we've been getting throughout the video but whenever you score a critical it's going to do the I believe is 200 200 times base damage and plus 50 uh, percent more on top of that so it's going to end up being about like 300% damage, I believe. And Quinn's Blades. That's the last one. I can't believe I forgot Quinn's Blades. Uh, Quinn's Blades, the reason we get that is that on hit, you deal a percentage of the target's maximum health as damage on top of your normal damage. And this, mixed in with, you already have a ton of damage. Like we were just talking about with the crits, you're doing the uh, very often critical strikes on top of the Deathbringers bonus to critical strikes on top of a percentage of their health they're getting chunked down really really hard really really fast it's very hard to deal with that kind of pressure and the later into the game we go it doesn't matter if they get armor we have uh, several sources of penetration if they get health we have Quinn's blades that help bring their health down and against tanks like Mir, Ares the people that you don't want to hit normally and that normally if you do hit you're not going to see a big effect from you're actually going to start to see them get hit really hard because they have more health that's more percentage of the damage being dealt so Quinn's Blade is an item that I really like on Artemis uh, I believe we actually use it in both builds the other build just to give you an idea is something more along the lines of um Starting with Executioner, into Warrior Tabai, into Quinn's Blades, Deathbringer, Fatalis, Rage. Uh, it's not like incredibly different, but the focus isn't so much on getting these like kind of slow shots that hit really hard. Kind of this is kind of like a sniper build, I call it. Uh, the other build is just very fast attacks that are doing the percentage health. Um, you still have a high crit chance. If you wanted to in that build, you could mix in like a frostbound hammer, some kind of other on-hit effects to take advantage of the attack speed. You still have her passive proccing the crits very often. So that build is not going to put out the burst, you're not going to see as big of numbers, but it is more consistent damage throughout the fight. Uh, so as you can see, overall, like with the game, the game's going very well at this point. It's 223 to 165. Uh, we're definitely have control of it right now. It's a little bit of an odd team comp. We have no magic damage to speak of, really. But they don't particularly seem to be building a lot of armor. And uh, I don't know I need this build, but like I said, I have enough penetration at this point to deal with any armor that they have that won't affect me too terribly. And they also do have a fair amount of squishy people on their team for me to be able to chunk down. You can see Ares there just getting hit so hard. He's actually dealing a lot of damage too, but 
still, the hidden area is that hard is pretty fun. So you pop the beads, you pop sprint. Um, even being that close, I don't want to get dragged in that, because that's where Ares is, is where everyone else is going to be aiming their ultimates. So just staying those few feet away from him, we're able to uh, avoid, say, a Kali ultimate that's going to be right on top of Ares, or something like that, or Anubis's uh, AoE slow. Anything you can do to avoid a little bit of damage is wonderful. And you see, as we're running away from him, uh, or from any other ranged AD, we kind of zigzag back and forth when we can. He does eventually catch up with his uh, his darts into another auto attack. But we kept him out of the fight for as long as possible. So we're starting to push back a little bit. Uh, whenever you can, you want to just get in a few auto attacks, just any poke damage you can manage. I'm looking for ultimate, there it goes. You see how hard he gets hit just immediately. That was just me and my ultimate. And just immediately down to about half health. That's amazing. See this Kali starting KO hard, but again, she also gets hit really hard. Uh, the combination of me and our Kali, it will take her down very fast. They are doing a pretty good job of trying to stay on track of our mini waves and uh, trying to keep those out of their base and keep us from getting the extra points for it. So you see nothing there. As we're running away, we'll throw a trap in front of us because they do activate relatively quickly and it is possible that whoever is chasing you will get caught in that trap and give you just enough time to get out of it. Uh, your traps, that's one of the things that I do on areas that I need to fix is I don't do a great job of making sure my traps stay down and I keep a max- you do have a maximum of three traps that can be out. Uh, and you probably should have a maximum ma amount of three traps out at a time. Uh, that's something that if you forget to manage for a little bit, um, it's definitely one of the marks of very good Artemis players, is that they make their traps really impactful in the game, and the traps are something that the enemy is scared to get caught in. Whereas when you first start playing Artemis, you're not going to feel like you're doing much with it. But it's really just utilizing it in whatever manner you can and thinking of creative ways to utilize the traps that really separate like really great Artemis players from the rest of us. But, you know, we're learning. That's what these guys are for. To help us progress, help everyone move forward with the game. Uh, it's a new game, so it's wonderful to see people going with creative things like that and using her traps in awesome ways. So again, it's kind of style here for a little bit. Just kind of... You can put damage wherever I can. This is probably going to be a dead. Oh no, we got out of it. We had the beads. Or he died. Nope, we had the beads, yeah. Uh, you see how hard we're hitting now. Anubis had us full out in Locust Swarm. And we're able to just walk backwards, auto attack him, and chunk him down from a good amount of health before his swarm could kill us. And we did not have a lot of health going into that. And you can see there just the damage that your auto attacks are doing at this point. That was just suppress the insulin. Uh, popping R2 to get the buff from it, and then just auto attacking. We didn't have our ult up or anything right there. He goes down. This guy goes down. Pick up a nice little double kill for us. Get this press the insulin on the college. She goes down too. We have really become very, very scary at this point. But again, we have to be aware. <laughs> when you're very scary, the enemy notices. And they are going to hit you very fast, very hard. So right there, we're getting a little bit silly. Uh, shouldn't have committed that far. We do take out the Anubis again. He really just doesn't stand a chance. He has to cocoon us for us to die there. And honestly, I, I would probably be hesitant to pop my purification.
location be there because I knew that they have areas. So if he was able to end the coon, the cocoon, he might get the kill off on me just um, out of me making a bad play on whether or not the purification beat out of that. So they're pushing back. The game's getting close. Uh, I honestly don't remember if we win or lose this one. It's only been a couple nights since we did it. And there's the ultimate, and I have no beads to get out of it. And that hurts. And you see now why the purification beads is such an important thing for your ranged physical carry to have. Uh, when you get caught, you just die really fast. This game's coming down really close. We're having a really big lead to this being a pretty tense game here at the end. Uh, I'm actually pretty anxious to see who wins this one. I can't believe I can't remember this. We can see here, as the game gets towards the end, it gets down low like this. I'm really just trying to get those minions down however I can. Someone just went all kinds of crazy. Thor's diving into their team way crazy. Getting auto attacks in, we pick up the kill on Anubis again. Oh, well, that was on Kali, actually. And Sun Wukong picks up the kill. So we do end up winning that game. I believe we went 16, 5, and 24. Check it here in a second. Yeah. 15, 6, 24. So, uh, please comment, like, subscribe. Let us know what you want to see. If there's any gods you want to see soon, we'll pump out more content for you as soon as we can. Thank you, everyone.